white privilege is a lie. I've asked you very simply to show me the white person that has privilege over me. Nobody stood up. Do you think you have privilege over me? Yes. You're crazy. You're insane. <laughs>which happened to be by Vince. Oh, Y'all, like this, content creators tend to, um, once you, when you find a, a, a fellow content creator whose message resonates with you, um, it's kind of hard for you to be like, oh, it's, it, it's kind of hard for you to not pull inspiration from them. But he did a lecture um, on this college campus and it was hostile, y'all. Like, I don't even know if I would have been able to be in that space with the level of hostility that these young people were directing toward him. It was, it, listen, I mean, it was like some fighting words exchanged, but it got me to thinking because there's this, this concept of white privilege that was brought up. And, you know, in the, in the realm of CRT, y'all know critical race theory is like on the forefront of, of, of academia. And these young people are going into these colleges and these universities and not even that grade school, they're being indoctrinated into the idea of this concept of white privilege. And the way Vince kind of handled that, I don't think they were expecting that response. Um, there were some liberal tears shed, like a little girl, she did cry. She cried because she got up to the mic and she literally looked this whole grown man. This is, I mean, in comparison to him, she's kind of like a child, but I'll call her a young adult. And looked this man in the eye and said that she had privilege over him. I don't believe in collective punishment. I deal with you as an individual. Individual. Therefore, white privilege is a lie. I've asked you very simply to show me the white person that has privilege over me. Nobody stood up. Do you think you have privilege over me? Yes. You're crazy. You're insane. You have no privilege over me. Let's make this absolutely positively clear. You have no privilege over me, and if you got it, show it to me right now. Um, my parents had generational you wealth. You, what's your privilege over me? Exactly. <laughs> well, you tell me. Let her speak. Let her speak. Yeah, we listen to you the whole time. Yeah, let her speak. Come on. Tell her, boy. She speaks. Oh. Shut up, boy. It's crazy. My parents were able to own a house prior to 1960. Their parents were able to own a banking account. They were able to go directly to a bank. They were able to own a house. They were able to get a job, and all of that wealth accumulated through the generations onto my generation. So that is why and I that was able privilege? to. That is yes. You're crazy. You're insane. Yeah, that's crazy. You don't have any privilege over me. Speak. 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 I think you misunderstood me. Um, I told you that I did not believe in white privilege as a punishment. I just meant it as an acknowledgement, as what crimes have done in the past. And then you came and attacked me for that. You were misconstruing what I am saying actively. It is not that I believe I'm better than you or that you are worse than me. I am not trying to punish anybody. I am acknowledging the system that exists. Was, was there a question in that? I was responding to your statement that was untrue. Which was? You said you mentioned something about collective punishment. Yeah. I said nothing of the sort. Okay, you're saying that your grandparents had privilege over me? They had privilege over yours. No, they didn't. You didn't know what? my parents. You didn't know my people, so you don't know that. <laughs> there, was a whole, there was a whole lot of people that were there. But right now, I'm talking about today. Yeah. You right. See... Again, listen, 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 listen. Hold it. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, listen. I'm done. To what end is this to make white people do what? 
I mean, what is the what is the end game of this? To do what? To make white people say they have privilege, and to what end? I mean, what do you want? Oh, I'm asking you, what do you want? What do you, what's the end game here? And it's amazing to hear white liberals say this. These are supposed to be the anti-racist, but they'll look you in the eye and and assert that they have privilege over you. And basically, he told a little girl that she was crazy. <laughs> he told her she was crazy. Words were exchanged. She ends up crying. And what I want, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit about what she said and what his response was. So this young lady who claimed, she claimed that the reason why she had white privilege over him was because her family, who is white, um, were able to work and transfer generational wealth to the next generation by way of owning a home. And they had the ability to go to a bank and take out a loan and then transfer that house and then to send the children to college. And she's naming all these things. And I'm like, wait a minute, black, black people do that too. But in her mind, the reason um, or the cause, the causation, the reason why um, she or her parents, I would say, were able to do that was because on the basis of their ethnicity, because they are white. And I, I found that to be one of the most racist statements ever because it presupposes that white people, and y'all know, y'all my people on here, those who do the will of my father. So when I talk about white folks, y'all know how I'm just, I'm talking about people who are of a, a, a Eurocentric persuasion in this country. This little girl was making a statement that just on the basis of them being white, that they just randomly one day woke up and decided that they wanted to buy a home. They didn't have to, now she didn't say this, but this is the logical conclusion that you have to arrive to uh, based on what she said, but that on the basis of them just being white, they were able to walk into a bank. She said, this. Now she didn't say this part, but she said they were, they walked into a bank and just got a loan. And I'm sitting there listening. So I'm like, so they didn't check any sort of credit worthiness or, you know, your parents' ability to repay this loan just because they were white. They walked in and they just gave them the money. I'm like, now that that seems to me to not be a very wise business practice, because if that were the case, a lot of banks would go under if they were just disseminating and giving out loans just because you white, you approve, you black, you not approve. And here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that discrimination does not exist or does not happen. What I am arguing is that these young people are going to colleges and universities and they are coming out literally believing that because they are white, that they have privilege over others who are non-white just because they are white and they claim it has to do with these systems. But my question is, why is it that they can never, what do they do with people like me? What do they do with people like Vince and members of his family? What, what do they just do with everyday Americans who are not white, who have done a few things such as go to school, you know, obtain an education, make themselves valuable in the marketplace by learning valuable skills and then improving upon those skills um, to where they're just good at what they do or uh, starting a business, right? Like, it makes me wonder, how is this country going to survive if these ideologies are pushed and they are so mainstream that... The inverse is when you would hear the black students come up to the mic, they really believed they would not say that I, they would not utter the words, I am inferior, but they function with a level of inferiority because they've been told that whiteness means privilege and that these people have privilege over them. So therefore you can't achieve and do anything. Or if the reason why you fail to achieve to do anything is because you don't have the same privilege that these white people do. And I just, I don't know how it ever made it in the world if I grew up thinking that to be true. And so what I want to do is I want to read to you an excerpt from Vince's latest book, 
It's called The End of Tolerance. And y'all, he hadn't even really promoted this book yet, but we, we about to change that. But this bad boy, this, this book has messed me up. It has messed me up because in chapter three, and I ain't gonna give away the whole book. Y'all need to just go on and buy the book, but it's really, really good. I wanna read to you a section from chapter three because he says something after he quotes Thomas Sowell. He says, envy was once considered to be one of the seven deadly sins before it became one of the most admired virtues under its new name, social justice. Then Vince goes on to say, he says, hard work, training, education, honesty, manners, and self-worth were too difficult and had to be jettisoned and exchanged for forced compliance by the barrel of a gun. He then goes on to say, the effort of forced compliance inevitably ends with the instigator gaining nothing but contempt. In other words, the people crying boo-hoo, oh, woe is me, like I'm such a victim and I can't rise above my circumstances because of the white privilege. Those people, those are the, uh, the instigators gaining nothing but contempt, saying that this type of behavior, it, it breeds contempt in others who witness it and experience you this way. He then goes on to say, even though the minions in the socialist media will bathe them with favorable press. Notice how all the social justicians, they always get all the press. Joy Reid, you know, got her own show. Roland Martin, and he has his own show on independent media, but you know, he has no problem getting, well, he might, cause he's just annoying. Primetime airplay, but Al Sharpton on MSNBC. Notice how these are the ones that's always crying, what was me? They get bathed in media attention. He then goes on and says, the majority of true Americans will view those rioting, begging, and crying unfavorably. They'll be looked upon as stalkers and sad, pitiful wretches. <laughs> At the same time, the rejector, those, those American Negroes, those my people, y'all, the rejector who chooses to be left alone will be viewed as the superior being justified in his treatment of lower class inferiors. And I'm just gonna finish with this. Since most black Democrats already view themselves in this light, their debasement does not matter. Their participation in this unmanly, un-American, and unchristian behavior was preordained and automatic. Who let you dog, who let the dog out? Who let the dog? He's here. <laughs> hey, baby. Hi, sugar booger. Oh, sugar booger. Okay, go. Go and sit down now. It's a live show. Y'all know how we do. Um, the dog has missed me. Y'all, the dog has been depressed. My dog has been depressed for four days. He was behind the couch. He didn't, he didn't want to engage with nobody. He was trying to figure out where his mama was. But I'm back now, and um, I guess he was demanding to come in here, so they let him in. Temper sit, please. Thank you. I want to sit down now. Um, so the part here that I wanted to just spend some time on that I thought was incredible um, was where he talks about even though the minions in the socialist media will bathe them, the pro-blackity-black, woe is me, the beggings, uh, with favorable press, how the vast majority of true Americans view them. And I thought that was interesting. I was like, this is why so many in the black community, no one respects us. And I'm saying us, meaning I'm not necessarily include me in the group. I'm just talking about in the macro because I don't have these kind of problems. But if you think about it, if all you do is riot, beg, complain, and whine, not compete, not Improve your situation and your circumstances, regardless of where you start. Because y'all know, I've heard uh, Kamala talk about the difference between equity and equality. And she does that analogy with the stool and how, you know, some people are down here and then some people are up here. So what you got to do is bring this person up so that everybody starts on the same playing field. And I'm like, this woman must have never played sports. She's never played sports. She's never started a business. She's never done anything where she actually had to compete to just be be better 
right? If she was put in a situation where she had to compete to be better, she would not come up with such a foolish way to view the world. Um, because nothing in the world... Where did this concept come from of life? We just need everything to be fair. Where everybody just needs a participation trophy. No, some people just... Some people just going to be at the bottom, right? Because they don't, they don't try. They listen to foolishness like this and listening to other people tell them how much of a victim they are and how oppressed they are. And if you constantly are internalizing those types of messages, then yes, you, you, you just, you just, you, you just whack. Like when I grew up in a generation where we actually had special ed classes Right. You had the gifted and talented classes. You know, you might have a little remedial classes. Then you just was everybody else like us being grouped based on ability was not a foreign concept. And I'm sure if you got put in special ed, you felt some sort of kind of way. But you were placed there because it was like this. This is just this is the level that you're able to perform at this time. Now, it doesn't mean that. Teachers would not work with you and, and challenge you and, and, and just vigorously uh, uh, place you on a trajectory where you would no longer be a special ed student. But for the most part, if that's just where you were based on your effort, that's just where you were. And it used to be OK. And if you were talented and gifted, if you were able to demonstrate, you know, a heightened level of academic prowess and you scored well, you were rewarded for that. Now, the idea of, of, of people being distributed and, and rewarded or not rewarded on the basis of their actual skill set, that is actually viewed as just unfair. And that's just wild and crazy to me. But I wanted to read you guys this because here is the overarching point that really messed me up, y'all. When, 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 when he talked about how this mindset was unmanly, un-American, and unchristian, I was like, that's it. There is no way, there is no way um, the whole concept of white supremacy and white privilege for black people to even be talking and speaking in those kinds of categories. Because when you do, this is the end result. People look at you with contempt. You'll never earn anyone's respect. They will always look at you as some little charity case that needs to be pitied. And I don't know about y'all, but the American Negroes that I come from, that's my Booker T. Washingtons and your Frederick Douglasses and your Harriet Tubman's, those people, no one pitied them because they recognized the importance of being able to compete based on their merit and that the amount of melanin in their skin was no indication of, of their value or their essence or their worth but that they were just people and that they had something of value to contribute to society and their communities at large. And if more of us did that, we would be so much more further along. But when you spend all your time whining and crying, time out when I can't do this and you demanding, this is why I absolutely hate and I know y'all gonna give me flack for this, but I absolutely do. I despise the civil rights operation of the 1960s.